3.3, Common Factors of a Polynomial. Now, before we get too far into this, I want to make sure we understand a couple of terms. First one, polynomial. That's one or more terms summed together. And, I mean, the variables also have to have whole number exponents. But the important part is it's one or more terms and they are summed together. Next definition is what is a term? A term is a number, a variable, or a product of both of them. Important thing to get out of this is also that it is a product in this case. So let's go through a couple of examples. 5 is a term. Now technically it's also a polynomial because it's one or more terms. If I write that as a 5x, it's still a single term. Yes, it's still a polynomial. It's not two separate terms because that 5 and the x are multiplied together. If I add another variable on, for example 5xy, still a single term. And yes, still a polynomial, but they are all multiplied together. But as soon as I add something else on, we have now added in a new term. That's now two terms. Still one polynomial, but two terms. I can add in more terms. There's no limit to how many terms that can be in a polynomial. That is still a single term. And once again, the difference between the polynomial and a term as soon as you have things summed together or added together, you now have separate terms. In order to be considered one single term, the whole thing has to be multiplied together. So this whole piece is a polynomial, and it has three terms. Let's get into factoring polynomials. Now, once again, all factoring is, is we are breaking it down into the pieces that multiply together to give you this polynomial. We're going to use some of the skills that we learned in previous sections to factor this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to factor each term separately. 8d equals. I like to kind of pull this off to the side. I'm going to do a factor tree for 8. Some of these, once you get good at it, you're not going to need to do a factor tree, but you can just go straight to the factors. Bigger ones, you're probably still going to need to do a factor tree. So 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. This should be looking familiar. And then I'm also going to look at the variables. I've got 1d there. 2 times 2 times 2 times d. That's what 8d is. If I look at 12d squared. Factor tree. I've got 2 times 2 times 3. Now when I look at my variables, I've got d squared means it's 2d's multiplied together. So I'm going to split those up. Now that I've got both of those terms factored out, I'm going to go through and I'm going to look for the greatest common factor, also known as the GCF. All right, looking for common factors. There's a pair of twos common to both. There's a second pair of twos common to both. I can take a pair of common d's. So my GCF equals two times two times d, or four d. But we're not really done here yet. I found my greatest common factor, but I haven't actually fully factored them. So you need to write it out in its fully factored format. I'm just gonna write the question out again. Eight d plus 12d squared equals, I'm going to start with my greatest common factor, 4d. Because essentially, I was able to take 4d out of both 8d and take a 4d out of 12d squared. When I say take it out, I mean divide it out. But I still had something left over when I took that 4d out of each of them. And that's where you come back here and you look for any pieces that are still in there, any pieces that did not get factored out. So on the 8d, I've got a 2 left. I had a plus in between, so I'm going to keep that plus right there. And on the 12d squared, I had a 3 and a d left. So 2 plus 3d. Now I've got my fully factored form. There it is right there. Let's write down the steps that we used. Our first step, we factored each term, including the variables. Next step, we found the greatest common factor. Our last step is we rewrote it in factored form with the GCF on the outside and inside in brackets all the parts that were left. A little side note, if all of the factors of a term happen to be in the greatest common factor, you don't write nothing down inside the brackets. You still have to put a one for that part. Let's factor another one. Here we've got a trinomial. It works the same way. We just have three terms, so we're going to have to write down three sets of prime factors. So six. I can factor that out to be two times three. Negative 12z. Notice how I kept the negative sign in there with the 12. So I've got a negative 12, we just did it a minute ago, is two times two times three, and then I've got a z. 
Last but not least, I've got 18z squared. I didn't put a sign on the 18 because it's positive and we automatically assume that if there's no sign that it must be positive. So I've got 2 times 3 times 3 times z and times the second z. Let's look for a greatest common factor. As I look through these, I've got some common 2s. There's one common factor. I have some 3s. There's another common factor. I actually don't have any other common factors. My greatest common factor is 6. Let's rewrite this as a product of its factors. Let's start with our greatest common factor, and that is 6. Put our brackets in, and I'm going to go through each of the other pieces. So on this first term, this 6, I had no factors left over. So we're going to have to write in a 1. We don't leave it alone. There's still something there, but it's a 1. Next one, I'm left with a negative and a z. So I'm going to go negative z. You've got to watch those signs carefully. And last, I've got a 3 and 2 z's. So I've got no sign on this, so I assume it's a positive. Positive 3, and I've got 2 z's. I write that as z squared. There is my factored form. I was able to divide a 6 out of both of those terms. Let's do another one. Here's negative 5z, negative 10z squared, negative 5z to the power of 3. Let's write the factored form of this. Negative 5z. Well, it's already in prime factors because 5 is a prime number. So the first piece is a negative and a 5 and a z. All right, next one, negative 10z squared. Got a negative, 10 I can break down into 2 times 5, and then I've got 2z's. Last one, negative 5z cubed. I've got that negative sign, 5 is a prime factor, and then I've got 3z's. Let's find our common factors. This time, I've got a negative sign that's common to all three. So I'm going to pull that out. Now, it's just a negative sign. We're treating it like a negative one, but it is still a common factor. I have fives common to all three, and I have z a single z common to all three. I've run out of z's on the first one, so I can't factor any more z's out. Let's rewrite this. So my greatest common factor is a negative 5z. So that's what I'm going to take out of both of those terms. So negative 5z minus 10z squared minus 5z cubed equals, stuff with the greatest common factor, negative 5z, put our brackets in. First term, there's nothing left. We took all the factors out. Notice how I've also taken the negative sign out. All I'm left with is a 1 because there's nothing left there. And it's a positive 1 because I took that negative sign out. Our second term, all that's left is that 2 and that z. So plus 2z. Last one, all I'm left with are those two z's. So plus z squared. There is my factored form. Now, if I were to expand that, in other words, if I were to multiply the negative 5z back in, I'd be all the way back at right where I started. Let's move on to this question. Here's another question where we're asked to factor it out. On first glance, it looks complicated. There's six separate terms in there. But what I want you to do before you start blindly factoring is I always want you to check, are there like terms that I can combine? Can I put pieces of these, this together? And let, let's look at that. It's a good convention to get into, to put your highest exponent first. In this case, it's an x squared. I've got an x squared there, and I've also got x squared there. So I'm going to put those together, which I can rewrite as 8x squared. Let's move down to our next power of x, where I've just got x to the power of 1. And I have two of those, plus 3x minus 15x. If I put those together, plus 3 minus 15, I have minus... 12x. And last, we're going to look at those constants. I've got a minus 4 there and a minus 8 there. So I've got minus 12. I now have a much simpler expression to factor. 8x squared minus 12x minus 12. It's only got three terms. It's way simpler than the one that was before. And from here, it's exactly the same. Do your prime factorizations. Look for the greatest common factor. I've got all my prime factors written out. Let's look at the greatest common factor. Now, two of them have a negative sign. The third one doesn't, so that's not a factor, but that two itself is. Notice how I circled the twos and not the negative sign. I've got another set of twos I can factor out. But look around. I can't factor anything else out of there. There's no other factors that are common to all three terms. Our greatest common factor is two times two or four. Let's rewrite that in factored form, starting with the greatest common factor. Four times. Leftovers in the first term is two and a pair of x's. That's two x squared. Leftovers in the second term is a three and an x. And left over in the last term is just that 3. There is my factored form. 4 times 2x squared plus 3x plus 3.